We've now been introduced to different kinds of reactions where there's a leaving group involved. We've seen two examples that are elimination reactions and two examples that are substitution reactions. We've also seen two types of reactions that are bimolecular in the slow rate determining step and two reactions that are unimolecular in the slow rate determining step. In this video, we're going to learn how to predict which type of mechanism is most likely to take place for any given molecule. The first decision we'll make is between a bimolecular or a unimolecular type of mechanism. We'll generally have either an SN2 or an E2 mechanism if there's a high concentration of a good nucleophile or a strong base. You should recall that, in general, a good nucleophile or strong base will have a negative charge. On the other hand, you'll have an SN1 or an E1 mechanism if we have a poor nucleophile or weak base. In general, these poor nucleophiles or weak bases will be neutral. The second decision we have to make is between substitution or elimination reactions. When we're deciding between SN2 or E2, if we have a methyl halide or a primary alkyl halide, those types of reactants will favor an SN2 mechanism. If we have a secondary alkyl halide, you'll get both the substitution and the elimination products. If you have a tertiary alkyl halide, you'll only get the E2 product, since SN2 reactions do not take place for tertiary alkyl halides. When you're deciding between SN1 or E1 mechanisms, if you have a methyl or primary alkyl halide, you'll get neither SN1 nor E1 reactions taking place. However, if you have a secondary or tertiary alkyl halide, you'll get both the substitution and elimination products. Another factor to consider is what's known as the solvent effect. For all of these elimination or substitution reactions, we need to carry them out in a solvent that is polar. If the polar solvent is what's known as a protic solvent, in other words, if there is a hydrogen bonded to either an oxygen or a nitrogen, those kind of solvents stabilize carbocations, and so polar protic solvents are good for either SN1 or E1 reactions. On the other hand, if we have an aprotic solvent, in other words, if the solvent does not have a hydrogen directly bonded to either an oxygen or a nitrogen, these aprotic solvents do not stabilize the negative charge on the good nucleophiles or strong bases. Therefore, the good negatively charged nucleophiles are free to react with the alkyl halide. Therefore, aprotic polar solvents are good solvents for SN2 or E2 reactions.